Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back. So I know it's been a while since the last time we spoke, and uh, yeah, let's catch up on some of the things that I missed and uh, tell you guys what my plan is when it comes to investing for the rest of the year and beyond. All right, so uh, yeah, lots to catch up on. First of all, uh, I know the biggest thing on everyone's mind is, of course, the conflict in Ukraine right now. Uh, so I know it seems a little bit insensitive to be talking about money and investing uh, and, you know, complain about losing money and stuff like this while people are suffering and dying in Ukraine. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is a finance channel. We don't talk about politics or I try to not talk about politics uh, when it comes to situations like this. I can't avoid it right obviously it's a geopolitical thing that has the potential to affect uh, the entire world not just one localized region right so uh yeah it, you know my heart goes out to everyone that's being affected by this um uh, and yeah if you want to donate uh, i'll find some links to charities uh and put them down below in the description they're not going to be like referral links or anything i don't get anything out of them uh, but yeah, if you want to donate and help out, um, the links will be down below. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, let's jump into uh, some of the things that uh, we want to talk about today, which is, um, first of all, the recession fears, right? So I've been hearing this word being tossed around over and over again uh, on the internet, especially in the finance YouTube space. People are worried about recession. Um, you know, the uh, as I said, the conflict in Ukraine is like one of the main uh, drivers, but uh, there are also other uh, areas of concern that we need to watch out for uh, to determine whether we think that a recession is going to come, right? So uh, I'll give my opinion on that, first of all. Uh, so first thing uh, is that uh, people are concerned about a Fed a rug pull. So what this means is that, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you know, uh, the Federal Reserve of the United States uh, decided to raise interest rates by 0.25% so 25 basis points, if you ever hear that term, that's what it means, right? A basis point is 0.01%, um, right? So 25 basis points will be 0.25%. So a uh, quarter of a percent interest rate uh, raised to the federal funds rate. Uh, in case you don't know what the federal funds rate is, uh, is the rate at which banks can borrow money from the Fed, right? So uh, this has broader implications because uh, if the banks are able to borrow money in a cheap way, uh, then, you know, they're able to, you know, make profits by lending out money uh, rather cheaply, right? But if uh, banks have uh, have to pay a higher interest rate to borrow money from the government, uh, then that means that they're either less willing to borrow uh, or when they uh, go ahead and invest in the economy or they let other people borrow it from them, uh, they're going to be charging a higher interest rate. So it essentially puts kind of like a slowdown effect on the entire economy uh, when the Fed raises interest rates. Uh, now, the reason why they're raising interest rates is because um, the inflation rate in the United States is too high, right? Uh, so uh, last time, the um, CPI report, which is the Consumer Price Index, uh, the index that is used to measure inflation, uh, we can talk about how it's not actually that accurate and there's like areas of the CPI uh, that like is not captured by the CPI. Uh, but, you know, that's a debate for another day. But just according to the official numbers, the CPI numbers, uh, inflation came in at 7.9% uh, for February of 2022 uh, of last month. So, yeah, that's incredibly high. Right. So just to give you an idea, usually um, inflation is around 2% or ideally uh, that's what the Fed is targeting, right? 2% long-term inflation uh, on a year-over-year -year basis. But uh, yeah, you know, 7.9 is obviously way, way higher than uh, what their target is, right? So that's why they got to raise interest rates uh, to kind of try and bring down that inflation so that, uh, you know, people don't, uh, you know, lose all their life savings to inflation, right? But uh, the idea is that if they lower, if they raise interest rates, uh, then that's going to lower economic activity uh, and that might cause a recession, right? So the Fed is kind of cut, um, caught in between uh, a rock and a hard place uh, because if they raise interest rates too much, the economy crashes uh, and we trigger, we're forced into a recession. If they don't do anything and let interest rates remain at zero or near zero, uh, then inflation goes out of control, right? So uh, those are kind of the two difficulty uh, that the uh, Fed has to face. 
Um, but uh, in terms of what the rug pull means, uh, rug pull just means that, uh, you know, back in, I think it was like 70s or 80s or something, there was a uh, Fed chairman uh, named Paul Volcker uh, who like jacked up interest rates uh, 10% um, or to 10% uh, in like pretty much just, you know, in an instant, right? So uh, that triggers a recession, obviously, when you jack up interest rates that much. But that was because uh, inflation back then was really bad, too. So uh, people are afraid that uh, Jerome Powell, the current Fed chairman, is going to do a Paul Volcker and just jack up interest rates, um, maybe not to like 10% instantly, but even like if he does uh, 0.5% raises, right, instead of 0.25% raises, uh, that can cause a big shock to the economy, too. And um, people are afraid uh, that the Fed meeting in March, which just happened, um, that he was going to do a 0.5%. Thankfully, that didn't happen. And I think that, uh, you know, Jerome Powell is being very careful uh, in his approach and not raising interest rates too much too fast, right? Um, but yeah, if, if he decides ever to, you know, raise interest rates by a lot uh, at once, uh, then that might cause, um, then that probably will cause a recession, like right away, right? And that's called a rug pull. So imagine if you're standing on a rug and somebody pulls it from underneath you, right? So that's that's kind of the imagery. Uh, and, and that's like a common term that's used in the crypto space, by the way. Uh, so yeah, anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, next recession fear. Uh, so there's that. And next recession fear is uh, commodity and energy price inflation, right? So uh, this obviously relates to uh, what I was talking about with the Ukraine conflict uh, earlier, right? So uh, because this conflict is going on, there's a lot of uh, resources uh, in both Ukraine and Russia, right? So Ukraine is I believe the fifth uh, largest producer of wheat in the world. I might be outdated on that information, but uh, they produce a lot of wheat, right? And it, they're called the bread basket of Europe. So uh, obviously you can't farm the fields properly if your country is being bombed and invaded, right? Uh, so there's that. Uh, they also produce around 70% of the world's neon, uh, which is a chemical, which is an element that is used in uh, manufacturing silicon chips, right? So the chip shortage is already bad enough, like computer chips, not uh, potato chips, right? So the chip shortage is already bad enough. Uh, and, you know, with this, uh, we're going to have to get a lot of the neon that's used to manufacture chips uh, from somewhere else. Uh, and also uh, another concern is uh, Russia, right? So Russia is being sanctioned right now because of the invasion of Ukraine. So that's another aspect where uh, a lot of companies are pulling out of Russia and not too many companies are allowed to trade with Russia still uh, because of the sanctions, right? And Russia uh, is a huge exporter of oil and natural gas, right? So uh, that's kind of the reason why you've been seeing uh, the prices at the pumps uh, go up. Uh, well, it's because uh, of this conflict, obviously, right? Because it's not because um, it, it is the sanctions are economically damaging to Russia, but it also affects uh, people elsewhere, right? It affects people in Western Europe and it affects people in Canada, United States, you know, just pretty much everywhere because, um, you know, if nobody can buy uh, oil and natural gas from Russia anymore, then they're going to have to buy it from somewhere else, which might be more expensive, right? And there's less of it to go around in the first place, right? So because of all these factors, um, there might be a possibility for a recession later on, uh, as uh, some people have said, right? So uh, there's like kind of two scenarios or maybe three scenarios uh, to that it could play out, right? Number one is no recession at all, right? Uh, and number two is uh, a recession, right? And number three is what I like to call a technical recession. So it's kind of like in between, uh, where the definition of a recession, uh, if you remember, is um, a period where GDP uh, decreases uh, in consecutively within two quarters, right? So if we have two quarters of GDP decreases, that's called a recession, right? So a technical recession would just be uh, technically it has GDP has decreased uh, for two consecutive quarters. Um, but uh, let's just say like, you know, we quickly recover from that or it doesn't affect too many things and we're able to uh, like it's not as bad as let's say the 08 to 09 recession and we're just quickly able to recover uh, that might be um, that might fit the bill what is called a technical recession right um, so those are kind of like the three kind of 
ways to go forward. Uh, and regarding of whether or not there is going to be a recession, well, um, before I share my thoughts, let me just uh, present to you two competing schools of thoughts from other YouTubers that I've seen, right? So uh, number one is Jeremy from Financial Education, uh, and number two is Ken, uh, also known as Chicken Genius Singapore. Uh, and um, yeah, they have kind of competing opinions, uh, right? So uh, if you haven't watched uh, either Ken's video or Jeremy's reaction uh, to Ken's video, uh, basically Ken was saying how, um, you know, there's he thinks that there is going to be uh, like economic slowdown, right? And there's uh, a high risk of inflation, uh, of inflation, of recession. Inflation is already happening, right? Of a recession. Uh, and, um, you know, a lot of asset classes and uh, kind of categories are not really good uh, besides treasury bonds, right? So he's buying bonds uh, to kind of hedge against um, the possibility uh, of an economic slowdown. So Jeremy made a, uh, a response video regarding that. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that I agree with Jeremy. Uh, a little bit more, right? So what Jeremy was saying, just to sum up the video, again, you guys should go watch the actual videos uh, if uh, if you guys have time, but I'm just gonna quickly sum it up. So, you know, don't uh, hate me if I forget something, right? But uh, essentially what Jeremy was saying is that, uh, you know, y you shouldn't like, you know, start trading like these things, right? Like you don't know what's gonna happen for sure. It, you might do well if you sell out of some of your stocks and go into bonds and all that stuff. Uh, but the fact is that these days, um, treasury bonds uh, especially uh, are kind of a trade because you're guaranteed to lose money if you hold it to maturity. Uh, so for those of you who need a refresher on how bonds work, they pay out uh, a certain percentage coupon or interest rate, right? Uh, and uh, you know, and also your yield, so your return uh, on the bond depends on the price of the bonds that you bought it at, right? So let's uh, say if you buy the bond and it the yield is 2%, then that means if you hold it till maturity, you're gonna get the equivalent of 2% a year back uh, in your returns, right? So there are annual rates. Uh, and, uh, you know, given that inflation's almost 8% these days, and it's probably going to be over 8% on the next CPI report, uh, then you're kind of guaranteed to lose money uh, if you hold the bond to, like, for all of the, you know, 5, 10, 20 years, whatever it is, right, if you hold it to maturity, right? So what this essentially means is that uh, if you're buying bonds, like your goal is just to kind of speculate on it, right? To trade it. So, cause you think that the price is going to go up. So if the price goes up, then you make capital gains and then you can sell the bond uh, and, and you can make money that way. So you don't, you're not actually holding it to maturity. So uh, bonds, in my opinion, have become sort of a speculative asset. And I know people always make fun of like Bitcoin or crypto as being speculative. But if you really look at it, bonds are actually very speculative as well because no one's kind of buying them. Uh, for the intention of holding it to maturity because uh, like it's a losing game if you try to hold it to maturity. Anyways, that's uh, kind of my thoughts on it. And yeah, I again, as I said, I agree with Jeremy uh, who is um, trying to emphasize focusing on the long term, right? And buying stocks uh, that are deeply like in value. Uh, and a lot of stocks, in case you guys haven't noticed, have been beaten down and beaten down. And um, yeah, a lot of these stocks look like real deals right now. So uh, to elaborate on that, um, what do I? What are some examples of uh, stocks that uh, are you know beaten down and might be potentially good values? Right. Again, not financial advice, but personally, uh, I am looking at stocks like, for example, uh, Meta, right, formerly Facebook, right. So. Uh, I know this is a controversial one and a lot of people hate uh, Facebook and uh, I get it, right? And, um, you know, I I understand if you're not a big fan of uh, the service and, and their impact on society and whatnot, uh, but you can't deny the fact that their business model is very strong uh, and uh, it's being priced like it's going to go bankrupt, right? Like, honestly, uh, if you look at the uh, forward PE, uh, I think it was like trading at like a 16 forward PE and like a 14 or, or 15 uh, trailing PE or something, it's incredibly cheap. Like name another tech company that's famous, that's of that of this scale, right? Like a large cap tech company that's trading for a PE like this, right? Like it's, 
uh, it's insane, right? And I think it's it's a joke price right now if you uh, pick up Meta at like you know two hundred dollars or share or whatever it is trading at right now or near two hundred dollars per share. Uh, I think that's a joke price, and it's like you're, you'd be very hard pressed to lose money. Uh, and I don't. I think there's a very very small chance that you would lose money in the long term if you pick up Meta at these prices. Right, so that's uh, kind of number one. Uh, number two, I think PayPal is really undervalued as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you look at how many uh, companies, how many businesses that are run uh, by PayPal, right? Like people are like, oh, I don't really uh, understand PayPal because you know I, I don't use the PayPal app, right? Like I don't use the PayPal website. Well, that's not really like what the main business is about right so uh first of all paypal does a lot of like back-end processing for merchants and stuff like that uh and second of all they own venmo right so you know a lot of people in the united states use venmo right i don't have venmo because i'm not um i don't live in the u.s uh but you know everyone who i know who lives in the u.s or you know who i see on the internet who are from the u.s they use venmo uh right and um yeah, they also own Honey, which I didn't even know before when I uh, I bought some PayPal stock, by the way, uh, which uh, I'll show you here. Uh, and I think I'm just about break even on it. But yeah, like I, I couldn't resist buying PayPal. Right. But when I bought PayPal, uh, I didn't even know that they own Honey. Uh, right. So if you guys need uh, a reminder of what Honey is, it's like that browser extension that plugs in. Uh, to your browser and finds you coupons and stuff like that. I didn't even know that, right? So, uh, yeah, they, they're just their hands are in a lot of different pots. Let's just say, right? Uh, and and yeah, those are just two examples. And honestly, there's so many more examples uh, of great companies that have been being down, right? Tesla, for example. I know Tesla's kind of coming back up a bit recently, but I think it's still a relatively good. Um, price at, at like you know high 800s or even 900 uh and um yeah if you just look at what's ahead for tesla it's absolutely insane all right but yeah uh, i'll make a separate video probably at some point talking about the new list of being down stocks to pay attention to uh but uh yeah in terms of like buying the dip uh, i think it's a great time to be um dollar cost averaging in right again don't go all in at once uh but uh, I think it's a great idea to to kind of like uh, pick up shares of companies uh, or even you know cryptocurrencies. Like I've been buying uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum mostly, uh, right? But um, yeah, I it, unfortunately I'm all dipped out at the moment. So I bought uh, like way too many things in like uh, January and February, and then when March came around, I just I ran out of cash, right? So. Yeah, I should have been a little bit more patient, right? So if I hadn't bought anything in January and if I just waited till February, obviously it's impossible to time the bottom. But uh, yeah, I, in retrospect, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? I shouldn't have bought anything in January because uh, like everything I bought in January is like down a lot. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, you can never time these things uh, 100%. It's kind of easy to be a bear right now than to be a bull, right? So what I mean by that is that it's easier to like keep on betting that the market is going to keep going down because for the past few months, hey, you've like made a lot of money if you've gone short uh, and you've uh, bet against the market, right? But uh, I think long term, uh, the general trend of stocks is always going up, right? So it's always going up into the right. Um, as long as uh, you know either your index fund investing or you're in great companies uh, over the long term you will see a trend upwards right and if you uh, dollar cost averaged in uh, then in the long term you'll win as a bull as a bear you're kind of just betting against you're going against the tide right so uh, eventually uh, it's not going to work out for you if you're a bear consistently although uh, if you're like an expert trader and you're like you know swing trading and stuff like that it could work out well again that's not my style though uh so you know you do you uh but yeah uh, in terms of like going forward what's my outlook right so uh personally i don't think there's going to be a recession and i know that that's kind of like an uh, at least not in the short term uh, and i know that's kind of like an unpopular opinion right now because all the other youtubers are saying that uh, there's going to be a recession where there's like a high risk of recession 
but I really don't think there is going to be one. And that's because uh, I think the Fed is going to have a hard time even completing uh, their six uh, raises that they're planning on doing in the future, right? So in case you don't know, uh, the plan right now, uh, as Jerome Powell stated, is that they're going to raise uh, a total of seven times. So they already did did it once. Uh, and there's going to be six more times in the future where they're going to raise the interest rate uh, by 0.25% for the rest of the year, right? And they're going to uh, probably also continue raising into 2023. But for the rest of the year, for the rest of 2022, their plan is to do uh, seven raises in total and there's six more to go. Uh, and, you know, I think that they're going to have a hard time even completing the six more raises that are uh, that are coming, right? Because the market is already making a fuss about rates going up 0.25%, which arguably doesn't even do anything because inflation's at 7.9% and they're in increasing the rate by 0.25%. Like, what's that going to stop, right? Like, even if they do complete uh, the six raises, uh, then you're at what, like 1.75 to 2%, like that range, right? That might not even do that much, uh, even if like, you know, they, they do all of it and they're going to have a hard time doing uh, all the raises because, you know, the market is going to keep on complaining and there's going to be pressure uh, for the Fed to be more accommodative because guess what? People, especially institutions, hedge funds, people like that, they don't like losing money, right? They don't like to see the stocks that are holding go down, right? And and obviously we don't like to see the stocks uh, that we have go down either. But, you know, we don't really, as retail investors, we don't really have that much of a say. Uh, but, you know, companies and hedge funds and all these investment firms, uh, you know, they do have a say uh, when it comes to like politics and stuff like that, right? They're big enough uh, and they're well capitalized enough to put political pressure on politicians and policymakers, right? So, uh, yeah, I think that it's going to be difficult for the Fed to even raise six times. They might raise like, you know, three, four more times and then be like, hey, we're stopping because uh, we can't take it anymore. Right. So, yeah, I think that it's going to be tough for the Fed to keep on continuously raising interest rates in like a major way. And um, perhaps at some point they will reverse course and be like, we're stopping. Uh, so. Uh, again, another thing is that this uh, conflict in Ukraine, uh, although it's really bad right now, I really don't see it dragging on for like years and years, like it, how it was in like uh, for the U.S. in like Afghanistan or Iraq or something like that, uh, right? And I, I just think that you know Russia is already being sanctioned like really hard, uh, and their economy is down in the gutters right now. They can't really sustain uh, like a war that drags on for like years and years, right? Like the the country would collapse right like russia would collapse um and i think that yeah it's uh it, it's a tough situation uh for sure and it's a tough situation for the russian citizens too right so uh, i know a lot of the um emphasis has been put on the ukrainians and obviously like i do uh, think that you know that that is justified right like people are dying uh, but at the same time uh, there's also like we also have to kind of think about the common Russian citizen who might not even be uh, supportive of this war, right? A lot of Russians are really against this war, but they're being dragged into this by their government, right? Which is really sad. Uh, and they're having their livelihood destroyed as well. So uh, I really think that, you know, the bite of the sanctions, like the really worst bad parts about the sanctions uh, are going to really start to take effect uh, in a few months from now. Uh, and, you know, if the war drags on for like months and months and even years, uh, then Russia is not going to be able to take it. Right. Like it's they're going to destabilize themselves too much. Uh, so I really don't see this war dragging on for uh, a really long time. And I do believe that a resolution, whether it be a negotiated end or, you know, both sides kind of compromise and work something out. Uh, I, I do think that that uh, might happen uh, within the next like one to two months. Uh, again, don't quote me because I'm not a geopolitical expert. I don't know. But I, I think that that's kind of the timeline that I have uh, in my head. Um, but yeah, so uh, we'll just have to see how it plays out. Right. There's no way we can predict like exactly how long uh, this war is going to last. Right. Because that's just the nature of war is just unpredictable. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm as to my plans, I'm taking sort of like a break from investing paying down some debts uh and like you know just maybe nibbling here and there but uh, i really don't see a rush to like 
deploy. I know I said this is a good time and it, it probably is, right? But I think that, you know, we're not gonna have like a huge V-shaped recovery uh, like the way that we did in 2020. Uh, maybe this recovery will be a little bit slower, I think. Um, so yeah, at the same time, although prices are good, I uh, might just wanna nibble and it's not like maybe a good time to go all in. So yeah, anyways, that's that. Uh, again, as long as you buy companies with great long-term vision, with great leadership, with great business models, uh, you'll be fine long-term, right? There's no way you can lose money long-term if you manage to find companies like those and just uh, times like these, accumulate, accumulate more shares, right? So. Uh, with that being said, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, links down below in the description as always. And with that being said, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.